Today we are talking about a process called U substitution. The title is going to be a little bit longer than what's on the board because today we're focusing on indefinite integrals. Indefinite integrals. Who remembers what a couple of the differences are between an indefinite integral and a definite integral? Which, which kind has a plus C on the end of the answer? Indefinite or definite? Indefinite. Indefinite. So everything we do today will have a plus C on the answer. Okay? And when you do a definite integral, does your answer have X's in it? Or is it a number? It's a number. It's a number. Definite integrals come out to be numbers. Indefinite integrals come out to be equations. So we're going to be doing, both of them require the use of an antiderivative, but we're going to be focusing on indefinite integrals today. Okay? What we're going to be doing specifically is undoing, undoing the chain rule. I hope you remember the chain rule from first semester. Okay? Let me kind of give this with an analogy. Back in Algebra 1, I believe everybody in this class learned a process called foiling. Do you all remember how to foil? Math, man, if math was only that simple again, right? Okay. Then you learned a few months later a process called factoring, which some of your teachers may have referenced as unfoiling. Basically, it's taking the answer to a foiling problem and going back to the question, right? Okay. What we're going to be doing today is taking the answer to a chain rule derivative and going back to the original equation. Okay. So, that's the review. Here is the first problem. There's really no notes. It's just straight practice examples, okay? We're going to take the integral of x times x squared minus 1 to the third power dx. So that is the derivative of some function. I want to know what the original equation is, what the antiderivative is. Okay? Now, I know that some of you are going to be able to do this in your head, okay? And that's fine, but they're going to get harder to the point where you're going to have to use the use substitution. But I want you just to watch everybody to watch the use substitution right off the bat. Okay? Now, let's think back to what we've done before. If we were, I told you that there is no product rule, no quotient rule, and no chain rule in antiderivatives. There's only undoing chain rule, okay? How hard would it be to foil this out and multiply that x in there? Would that be worth your time? It'd be a lot of work. So this problem right here, because it's got multiple x's, is a good chain rule or u substitution candidate. Also. That looks like a chain rule problem, doesn't it, right there? If you see something that looks like chain rule, it's going to be a good use substitution problem, okay? Now, here's what we do. Now, for this first problem, I'm going to recopy the exact problem because I'm going to start doctoring up the integral, and it's hard to tell what was there originally and what was not. So I'd like you to recopy this exactly as you see it because I'm going to start playing with this integral a little bit because this is how you actually do the work. We are going to change this entire integral from x's to u's. And in the process of doing so, we're going to simplify it tremendously so it's easy to take its integral. Okay? Here's what you want you to do. We're going to define part of this problem as u. And I'm going to come up here and write this in a bracket. u is going to be the inner function every time. So you need to look at the problem that you start with and look for an inner function. So like if you were going to do the chain rule, what would be the inner function? What, what would be the inner function on this one? X squared, minus. X squared minus 1. Very good. So the step one is to define u. We're going to change that yucky inside to that power to a simple u. Okay. Now if we're going to change this to a u, this cannot say dx anymore. It's got to say du instead. It's got to match letters. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this thing and we're going to take the derivative of both sides and we're going to write it this way. du dx equals the derivative of u is du dx. What's the derivative of x squared minus 1? 2x. Agreed? Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this du over here and I'm going to write it this way. du equals 2x times dx. And I want you to put the step above it in a parenthesis because we're never going to write that. We're going to go straight to the du format. Okay? All right. So now we've got to figure out 
how to turn all of that into use. Okay, now I need you to change colors. Change colors. <coughs> Swap pens, change colors, whatever you want to do. I want you to draw a new integral symbol. Okay? I want you to locate what we originally defined u to be. u is x squared minus 1. Here's the part of the problem with x squared minus 1 in it. How would I write this in terms of u? What would not u squared. That would be u to the third. Do you all agree with me there? Is that u to the third right there? So down here, I'm going to write u to the third because that's what that is. And I'm going to basically gently light mark that out so I don't try to mess with it anymore. Okay, let me say it again. U is x squared minus 1. I'm looking just at that. If u is x squared minus 1, isn't that u to the third? Yes. U is x squared minus 1, so I'm turning the x squared minus 1 into a u. Okay? Oh, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, it, it, you're not the only person who's had that happen. It just had to, takes a minute to click. Okay. okay so. Now, I need to have a du after that, okay? But over here it says the du has to be a 2 times an x times a dx. Now, what do I have in here? I have an x and a dx, but I don't have the 2. Do you see what I'm saying? In order to turn all of this leftovers into du, it has to match this, okay? So what I'm going to do is I need a 2, don't I? And some of these problems are going to be missing a number, okay? In this case, I'm missing a 2. And you know how I'm going to do, what I'm going to do to fix that? I'm just going to put a 2 right there. You're like, wait a minute. How can you just do that? Well, here's how I can. If I put a 2 here, I have to put a 1 half outside to balance it out because what is 1 half times 2? One. 1. Did I change the value of this integral? No, I didn't change its value. I just changed the way it looks, okay? So now, this 1 half comes straight down there. It's outside, so you don't mess with it. This 2x and this dx combine to make the du, and I can write it down now. Okay, I want to stop for just a minute. Do you understand how everything that was x's has now turned into u's? How yes. Did you put the two there? I was allowed to put the two there as long as I balanced it out with a one half. Well, no, but like, how'd you know? So I looked at what's over to, here. I have to make it look like this. Okay. 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 Kind of some weird math, but you give. But think about okay. If you were back when you learned how to do common denominators, if you had to turn one half into eighths, didn't you just put a times four on the top and bottom of your fraction? You just threw a four in there. That's what I'm doing. I'm just throwing a number in that I need as long as I make it equal 1 by putting the 1 half outside. Okay? All right. Now, isn't this problem a ton easier looking to do than this problem up here? Integrating that should be a piece of cake. Okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and integrate it. So bring down the 1 half. Draw your parentheses. What power does u go up to? It goes up to 4. What goes in the front? 1 over 4. Remember that? And what did I say every answer on this problem has to have? Plus, Plus C. Remember, integrals increase in power. So the 3 goes to 4. It doesn't go down. It goes up. Okay? The U just disappeared right there? No. It became, it's right there. No, the DU. The DU. Every time you take an antiderivative, as soon as that power goes up, these That's two markers, okay. the integral and the DU, drop off. Oh, okay. They drop off. Okay, now, I started in x's, I have to end in x's. So I change this back. What's 1 half times 1 fourth? 1 eighth. Change the u back to what it was. x squared minus 1 to the fourth plus c. And that is your answer. That is the antiderivative of that integral right there. Okay. For this very first problem, I want to check this to make sure I did it right. So, how do you check an antiderivative? Take, take the derivative. So I'm going to take this answer and make it an equation, y equals 1 8 x squared minus 1 to the fourth plus c. And I'm going to take its derivative. Okay. 
For those of you who need it, the outer function is the 1 8th and the parentheses to the 4th. The inner function is the x squared minus 1. So what am I going to do first? I'm going to bring the 4 down and multiply it to the 1 8th. What does that become? 1 half parentheses x squared minus 1. What is the new exponent? 3. Derivatives decrease in power. Times 2x. And what's the derivative of the c? It is 0. Okay? I want to show you something. Do you see this number and this number? Isn't that the two numbers I introduced in the integral? Yes. What's going to happen to them right now in the derivative process? Going to They're going to cancel out. But since I'm going backwards here, I have to make them reappear so I can take the antiderivative. Okay? So these two numbers are these two numbers that I made reappear right here. Okay? okay. So my final answer is going to be, bring the x to the front, because those cross out, times x squared minus 1 to the third, and lo and behold, that's what I started with. Okay?